What's going on everyone? Thank you for stopping in. Um, today we got some more LS swap stuff going on. If you're new to the channel, I have a 98 uh, Chevy pickup. I tore the fit, or 350 out of it. And I put my 5.3 out of my 2002 Silverado in it. Um, we're getting close to being done. I'm almost done with all the wiring. I think I got it just about done. I think all the hard parts are done except for the power steering pump. Everything else is plumbed in. Um, I'll show you guys that real quick so we can go over everything and then I'll talk to you about what I got accomplished last couple days and just show you something pretty exciting. So like I said, this is a 5.3. This is out of my 2002 Silverado. It has flat top pistons, so a little bit more compression, a ported throttle body, and a ported intake manifold. Um, other than that, this is a completely stock 5.3. Oh, okay, it has a, a 6 liter cam in it because I, I swapped a 6 liter into my 2002. Um, I had it laying around and I put it in while this was out. So it has that, a little a tiny bit bigger than stock, but not much. Um, you can see we got a whole bunch of wiring going on. One thing I was trying to uh, accomplish in the last video about this truck was to get the engine to turn over, but it wouldn't because I believe. Well, I know because I didn't have the neutral safety switch on the transmission. I have since gotten it and it does turn over. So I'll show you guys that real quick. All right, so I got the computer hooked back up. It is not tuned yet or had the vats deleted. So this will not run. And uh, yeah, I got the battery hooked up. Everything's clear of the fan. So nothing's gonna get hung up. So you can see it's not starting, but that is okay because it is still pretty damn good progress. It's pretty exciting that this engine is actually turning over. This truck hasn't ran in, I think, three or four years. My brother had it and the engine blew. Um, I bought it from him for very cheap because I had a blown engine, tore the engine out, got rid of all that. I had a 5.3, so I stuck it in here. I'm obviously in the process of everything, but I think it's pretty cool. I think the problem is now, um, for one, the fuel pump is not pumping fuel because it sat for so long, it might be, you know, froze up or whatever. Um, a couple things I'm gonna try. Hopefully I can get it to break free. If not, looks like we're gonna be doing a new fuel pump in this bad boy. Uh, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's set you up and watch the engine turn over. And this battery is very old. This was the battery out of my um, 2002 Silverado. Um, one of, like the first year I had it, I took it out, I put an Optima red top in it. That battery wasn't even bad. I just you know thought it'd be cool and throw a red top in it. But that thing sat for like four years, and it is since I think before this truck actually went down. And uh, I tested it um, a couple weeks ago. Had nine volts. Threw it on the charger for a while, and it seems like. It's okay. I mean, it's, I've messed with it a couple times now before this video, so it's kind of drained out now. But I think it's still kind of impressive that it's at least holding a charge and it'll turn the engine over. Um, maybe once the engine's going, it actually charges back up to its full capacity. Um, hopefully, it's good. If not, oh well. But still, that's uh, I'm impressed that the battery has lasted that long. In the last video, I was talking about the. Um, coolant temp sensor. So you need the coolant temp sensor out of a 98 Camaro. I guess that's the only year they have it. It needs to be three prongs. You cut off your factory one, these top two, splice back into the LS harness, then the one uh, green one goes to the truck. The computer does not register oil pressure on these LS engines. It just goes straight to the gauge. So I don't know why I said oil pressure. Um, this is coolant temperature. I'll talk about the oil pressure sensor here in a minute. But same same deal. So yes, the top two go to the computer. I'm an idiot. Um, the green goes through the firewall into the gauge. And I'll show you guys a 
the picture I use the schematic real quick. Now back to or to the oil pressure sensor. That is what does not go to the computer. The computer does not read the oil pressure sensor. That just goes straight to the gauge. So it is up to you to watch oil pressure because that you could have zero and the engine will keep going. Um, and that being said, you need the oil pressure sensor out of that truck, not an LS one. But you have to buy the adapter threads because. The LS engine is a metric, and the old 350 was a pipe thread. I thought I had the right one. The one I had was, I think it's 16 millimeter for the LS to eighth inch pipe thread, but this did not fit. This looks like, this looks like quarter inch pipe thread, so I'm gonna head to Summit real quick and get that adapter, and hopefully it fits. Um, I've heard that some have one eighth, some have one quarter. Uh, maybe you just have to measure yours. But for me, it looks like I'm gonna need qu or quarter inch pipe thread. And I was fortunate enough to get some Summit gift cards from some lovely family members after Christmas. So I picked up some of these the new door roller deals. You see that one's completely bent over. Both sides are the same. I'm gonna be doing the um, pins too. That way these doors will close if you watch. How much of a gap that has which is door sagging and you can pick the door up and you feel the slop in it. As you can see, it's getting dark, so I'm gonna make this quick. Here are the two fittings. This is the one I had. That was uh, 16 and a half, or 16 by one and a half millimeters. This is the same one, but this one goes to quarter inch pipe thread. This one was one eighth, obviously. That ain't gonna work. So I don't know if all the trucks are like this, but I can say that my 98 had the half or quarter inch pipe thread, so. For the LS block, it comes with a little crush sleeve ring deal, so that's how it seals. And this is pipe thread, so it is tapered. We'll get that put in, and uh, yeah, see, we'll turn the engine over and see if we have pressure. All right, battery's back in. I'll let it charge while we are in town at Summit. Let's see if we can get low pressure reading. That'd be cool. Well, it is not, you can't even see it. Before the gauge was all the way just, you know, all the way to the right, now it actually is back to zero, so that's good. It's got a closed loop at least. Since it got dark and uh, that's all we could do, I thought, you know, this is for the green truck. I picked this up. This is, this is just some straight um, three inch exhaust tubing. Whenever we do fab up the exhaust on that guy, one of the things I bought with my Summit gift cards um, but I got to thinking, um, my truck is a three inch exhaust and I kind of want to know what my truck would sound like with the tailpipe on it. So maybe we'll fire my 6.0 up real quick, even though it has nothing to do with this, the 5.3 swap, see what it sounds like with and without a tailpipe with four inch of pipe behind it. So let me go grab the keys and get this thing going.
So I thought a good idea to show you guys the difference. I downloaded a decibel meter. So we'll measure it with or without the exhaust pipe. So I don't know if you guys were able to pick up any of the difference. It was a little bit quieter with the tailpipe. Uh, most notably that it didn't drone nearly as bad, especially sitting inside the cab. Inside the cab, it definitely reverberates a lot with the tailpipe on it. It seemed like it really mellowed it down. So that's cool. I am really a fan of it. I think I might consider getting a tailpipe put on my truck, whether it's something I do myself or me and my buddy or take it to a shop. I really like being quiet inside the cab and just loud on the outside, everything else behind me. But like I said, that exhaust pipe is for the 5.3 swap we got going on. And so we just need, I keep forgetting to grab the power steering pump, um, the factory one. Well, the one that came on the truck, I left it at my parents' house. I was there this weekend and I forgot. But I need to grab it because I need to get the lines off of it to hook the new fuel, or, uh, power steering pump up to the power steering box. Um, I need the Y pipe. Uh, I said before, I'm going to try the Jeg's off road Y pipe. It's a factory Y pipe, it's basically minus the cats. Um, I've seen, oh, actually, on their website, somebody commented and uh, reviewed it and posted pictures that it fit on his LS swap on a, an OBS. So I'm hoping it fits and it works and we can fab it up and make it work with that. I asked a question, it was actually today, but by the time this video comes out, it'll be a week or something. I don't know. But a, uh, a poll on Instagram about what muffler I should go with. So if you're not following my Instagram, follow me at Endless Wishlist 6.0 if you want to be a part of things like that. I'll ask you guys, I'll ask your advice, you know, sometimes on things and whatnot, get you guys involved. But yeah, so I think I'm going to be going with the, the race mufflers, the black one, the Summit brand. They're, I've been told that they're Flowmasters, they just don't have the Flowmaster name on it. and. I believe it because here are two Summit branded ones that were on that truck. These are two and a half inch inlet outlets, so they're not going to work. But they look the same and they sound pretty damn close, if not exactly the same. So, you know, for 30, 36 bucks, depending on which one you get, I think it's a hell of a deal. That's, so that's what we're going to go with. And I think we're just going to do like a, like a turn down after the axle or something. Not get too crazy. I carried away with the exhaust, just make it nice and easy, simple, and sound good. And also, I finally picked up the uh, oil catch can for the other side of my 6.0 swap. So if you're interested in watching um, oil can or oil catch can install on both sides of the PCV system, go ahead and you know subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that will probably be the next video, the next upload. They're already on the truck, but I'll take them off, put the factory stuff back on. So I got the factory stuff on the 5.3. But uh, yeah, so you know, we're mixing and matching, but it's all going to work out in the end. And then I think after that, uh, we'll, we're going to be pretty darn close to the 18th. I'm not exactly sure when this video is going to come out, but 18th, if you don't know, is the day I have scheduled to get the 6.0 dynode um, in tune, tune dynode, both, you know, whatever. Like put the new heads, the intake, and everything on bigger injectors, so it is ready to rock. But we're towing it there, so I don't want to mess anything up. I have turned it on a couple times, let it run, and warm up, keep warm. You know, battery's junk. Um, I'm not sure I'm ever gonna buy an op from the battery again. Like I said earlier, that Costco one sat for four years and it's just fine. So these are the, this is the second set of Optimas I've had. I'm starting to rant. That's not what this video is about, but yeah, I already had four of these things take crap on me, so probably not getting Optimus again. So I guess um, if any of you guys are battery guys, go ahead and comment below what batteries you guys have had good luck with or which ones you recommend. Um, if you're an Optima guy, um, don't comment because I'm not going to get another Optima. I'm tired of them. I've heard that 
they used to be really good, but then somebody else bought them out or they had a different manufacturer or something. But the quality has gone downhill, apparently. So, yeah, that's enough of that. Well, thank you guys again for stopping in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys stick around for either 6.0 content or 5.3 OBS swap content. I will do my best to keep it coming, and I will see you guys next time.